Go to Luke, please, the eighth chapter. Now, you, you weren't just idling along. You released your faith with me when we prayed right then, right? So, uh, as we go into some things, don't look around and go, man, where's so-and-so? They need to hear this. Well, the Lord knew who was going to be here, right? And you're here, and I'm here, so this must be what we need. And of all the things he could have led us to look at and talk about today, this was the one he picked. And so let's, let's respect it and reverence it. I, I don't randomly or lightly preach on a thing. Even after preaching for a number of years now, uh, it, the next time it comes time to speak, you don't have it until he gives it to you. You don't. And oh, oh, you could preach something you preached before, but it'd just be dead and dry and empty. And folks that are spiritual could tell the difference. But uh, when he gives it to you, how many think we should respect it? That this is, this is not just something a man came up with. It's something the Lord is saying to us. Um, and his words are life. Hallelujah. Life. Spirit and life. And health and medicine to those that find him. In Luke the 8th chapter... We see the account, Luke's account, of the healing <clears throat> Luke 8 of the um, ruler of the synagogue's daughter. In the same passage you see the healing of the woman with the issue of blood. Um, let me see, verse 41 Behold, Luke 8, 41, there came a man named Jairus, and he was the ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a-dying. How many would think, like so many other parents, she was the apple of his eye? Right? 12 years old. And she's dying. And he comes and um, falls down at Jesus' feet and pleads with him. And uh, besought him that he would come. But as he went, uh, the people thronged him. If you look at the other accounts, Jesus immediately said, yeah, I'll come. You know, nobody ever came to him and asked for healing and he said no. That's right. Or deliverance. And he said, no, it's not God's will or it's not time. Never, never. Everybody that came to Jesus to be healed left healed. Hallelujah. Everyone. Yes. Everyone. Now there's some folks he went to that didn't receive it. That didn't get it. But everybody that came to him received. Looking for it, asking for it. And uh, you see that as they're going, the woman with the issue of blood came. And pressed through and touched his clothes. And so you, you would imagine, he said when he first got to Jesus, she, when I left her, she was, she was dying. So time is of the essence, thinking from the natural, right? Well, as time has passed since he left the house to come to Jesus. Now they're heading back and they get interrupted by healing, Right? They're not having a healing meeting. They're not having a laying on of hands. They're going down the road. And this woman comes through, presses through the crowd, touches Jesus' garment, and just takes a healing. Didn't even ask if it'd be okay. Right? Did, didn't ask. And I think that's one of the reasons when Jesus stopped in his tracks and he said, who touched me? And if you look at other accounts, one of them says, all denied. Well, all would include her, right? So he's looking around the crowd saying, who touched me? And everybody's going, mm, no, I didn't touch you. He looked at her, she went, mm. <laughs> But he wouldn't go on. He said, no, now somebody touched me. Who touched me? I felt it when the, when the power went out of me. How many know healing power is real? The power of God is real. I felt it when it went out of me. Who touched me? And finally, when she saw that she couldn't be hid, he's not going to go on. She says, because <laughs> see, she didn't even ask if this would be okay. 
She just came and took it. How many know it's always okay with Jesus for you to come and take a healing? We had a bunch of people take a healing yesterday morning, didn't we? Thank you, Lord. And you can take one today. Well, the Bible said she came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Well, that took a little while. And all the while, uh, this daddy with the dying girl at home is standing by the side waiting for him to get through so they can get back to the house. And verse 49, verse 48, he said to her, the woman with the issue of blood that had been healed, daughter, be of good comfort. Your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. He's not going to reprove her. You should have checked on the will of God. You should have asked me. No, no. She's great, girl. Good going. Your faith made you whole. Go in peace. While he yet spake, there comes from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him. Now let's think about this. What do you think Jairus thought when he saw these guys from his house coming? Hmm? Why are they here? What condition was his daughter in when he left? And it's been a while. And, and what do you think as time keeps passing on and passing on, what do you think he's thinking? We got to go, we got to go, we got to go. And the Bible said the woman with the issue of blood healed. She told him all the truth. <laughs> so I don't know how long this went on, but I'm sure he's glad she's healed, but he's chomping at the bit, you know, to, and then he sees them coming. Why are they coming? You know the thought. The enemy is the same then as he is now. He said, she's gone. You waited too late, messed around too long. You know, the, the devil is always the blamer, the accuser. And we don't want to be a part of that. Right? I don't care what people have done or how much it looks like they brought it on themselves or they deserve it. Do not get on the bandwagon to blame them or to accuse them because that's devil business. Did you hear me, friend? Don't do it. The devil's the accuser of the brethren. God is, Jesus did not come to the world to condemn the world, did he? God's not the condemner. But the thought, I'm sure the enemy is telling him, you know, you messed around here too long. You should have been gone, you know, 30 minutes ago. It's too late now. And then when they came and they opened up their mouth, that's exactly what they said. They said, your daughter is dead. She's gone. I'm sorry. Too late. No need bothering the master anymore. She's gone. Does he have symptoms I said, does he have symptoms? Oh, feelings, right? He knows they're not coming there lying to him. He knows what shape she was in when he left the house. She was about dead when he left then. He knows they would not come here and tell him this unless they know. She's dead. She's not breathing. She's gone. And so what did he do? He's standing there with all these feelings washing over him. And Jesus, Jesus, when he heard what they said, your daughter is dead, don't bother. When he heard that, when he heard it, immediately he looked at him and he said, fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. I want you to say it out loud. Fear not. Fear not. Believe, only, Believe only. And she shall be made whole. And she shall be made whole. Now, if this man's response to this wasn't critical, Jesus wouldn't have said it. He'd have just said, I stand aside. I'll take care of this. Right? But he can't. <laughs> it was only Jesus he knew anything else. Not according to Jesus. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. Right? And when people were healed again and again, he didn't say, I just decided to do it. I'm the anointed one. I got the power. What did he say? We just got through reading. Your faith 
has made you whole. He could have said it any other way, couldn't he? He could have just said God healed you. He could have just said it was in the sovereign plan. He could have said because I'm the special one. He could have said any kind of thing. But the emphasis is he put the emphasis where the emphasis should be placed. Not on God, not on the will of God, not on the power of God, but on the individual's faith. That is the determining factor. And a lot of folks in here know a little bit about faith. I say a little bit. Don't think you get to don't get to thinking you know all that much. But I'm I'm confident there are real answers here today about issues and problems that folks like us, faith folks, have experienced and results that have not been forthcoming that should have been. Are you ready for some answers today, friends? Do you believe? Jairus' correct response is absolutely vital to his daughter being raised and healed. Do you believe it? It is. That's why Jesus wouldn't have done this. He stops. He looks at him. Why? Because what he does is going to determine what happens next. Elsewise, he wouldn't have done this. He'd have just kept going and raised her up. He stops. He looks at him. What does he say? Help me out. What's the first thing he told him? He told him what to not do. You know why? Because fearing can stop a miracle. Yielding to fear can absolutely stop a miracle that's already in progress. I mean... This is not just one isolated phrase, is it? How many times in the Word of God did God, His angel, the Spirit of God, a man of God, a woman of God, tell people at critical times the first phrase they told them was, Fear not. Why? It's not just a little happy saying. It's not just a little pep talk. Don't be afraid now. Mm -mm. It's critical information, if you don't do this immediately, you're going to open the door to the enemy. You're going to mess up what God wants to do. Say it out loud, fear not. not. When the Lord says fear not, what do you suppose he expects us to do? Now a lot of folk, I've ministered to people before and I've told them, don't be afraid, don't fear. And they've looked at me with tears and said, I can't help it. You do not want to tell the Lord that. When he says fear not, and you say, I'm I'm doing the best I can, but this is just, I mean, think about this man. This is his baby. This is the apple of his eye. He knows they're not lying to him. She's laying back at the house, uh, cold, dead, not breathing. He knows that. His feelings, his emotions would be the same as any daddy that loved his girl. And he could say, well, it's just more than I can take. No. The very fact that the Lord says, fear not, even if you couldn't do it before he told you, the fact that he told you means now you can because his words are enablements. His words are empowerments. Can you see it, saints? So when he said, fear not, you ought to go, hallelujah, that means I can. Fear not. Then what does he say? Believe and do that only. Why would you say that? The the title of the message today is full-time faith. Full-time faith. As opposed to what? Part time. When he says believe only, he's talking about full time faith. He's not talking about fearing some and believing some. There's a word for that wavering. Right? Is wavering a problem? It's a huge problem. Can wavering prevent you from receiving? Yes, it can. 
Tell me again what Jesus said. Fear not. Believe only. And what will happen? She shall be made whole. What's Jesus saying? He's got Jairus' eyes. He's saying, Jairus, now man, you came and found me. You told me if I'd come and lay hands on her, she would live. Don't quit me now. Stay with me. Don't let this scare you. Don't let this shake you. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Just stay with me. And what you said will happen. And apparently, Jairus, Jairus did that. Right? Apparently, he did not break down and start screaming and crying, my baby, my baby's dead, my baby's dead. If he had a, this story wouldn't be in the book. Too many people think you can make a good confession in the morning and talk fear and worry and and, and the problem the rest of the day and get some results. And you can't. I said you can't. And this is why a lot of folks, faith people so called, that are really not walking in faith, are not getting results. Because you got to pick one. And do it. And not do the other. Say it out loud. What did Jesus say? So what are you going to do about fearing? You're not going to do it. That means you can't look at it. You can't think about it. You can't talk about it at all. Y'all with me or not, saints? This is where millions of good Christian people are missing it. They think they can talk the problem and throw in a good confession once in a while and everything work out. And that's not how it works. If you're still talking the problem, you're not committed to walking in faith. You can't do it part time and get the results. He said, fear not. Believe only, she shall be made whole. Say it one more time. Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Go to James, the first chapter, please. I know some of this is uh, sobering, but it needs to be. The devil's been... Stealing. And uh, you, you'll see this. I'm, I'm, I have to watch about getting ahead of myself here. It's, it's right here plain in the scriptures what happens when we keep talking the problem instead of talking what he said. In, in James, the first chapter, everybody still believe it? We prayed a prayer a few moments ago that we'd hear exactly what we needed to hear. Right? You with me? Okay. James 1, and let's see about verse 5. James 1 and 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that gives to all men liberally, and upbraids not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. And then he defines what asking in faith is. Nothing wavering. How much wavering is okay? No wavering at all. Nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Now, you'll find the word for doubt, uh, one of the words for doubt, and the word for waver Uh, They have some connection. And the Bible said Abraham staggered not. Same word here, talking about waver. When Peter uh, looked at the winds and the waves and he started to go down, and the Lord said, why did you doubt? It has to do with duo. Duo meaning two instead of single. 
duo. See, Peter was considering two things. And you can't do that. Multitasking is a myth. <laughs> I'm going to tell it to these folks over here, see if they, if they like it any better. Multitasking, so you don't know who you're talking to, I'm one of the best, is a myth. Myth. Flying fast jets in bad weather and low approaches is about as close to multitasking as you might imagine. You got all these instruments. You're moving forward and you're dropping at the same time and you're talking on the radio. You got about 50 things going at the same time. Somebody said, well, you're a multitasker. No, no, you don't do all these things at the same time. You do them one at a time, quickly. <laughs> but while you're looking at this, you are not looking at this. I don't care what you think. You're not. You cannot do all these things at the same time. No, you're not. You're bouncing around. And when it comes to faith, this is disastrous. And that's what Peter was doing. Can you see it? He said, Lord, if that's you, Tell me to come. So what did he say? And what are Jesus' words? His words are empowerments. They are enablements. If he tells you to do something, when you heard the word, the ability was there. He believed it. He stepped out on the boat. I believe, well, it had to be. He had to be single-visioned and single-minded about Jesus and that word come when he stepped out of that boat and rested his foot on that water. Had to be. And he's walking on the water. He's doing the so-called impossible. He's experiencing a miracle until he starts multitasking. <laughs> You should see some of the looks I'm getting across the crowd. <laughs> what, 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 do you, what do I mean? Do you know what I mean? What's he doing? Winning waves, Jesus. Winning waves, Jesus. Jesus, winning waves. Winning, Jesus, winning, Jesus, winning waves, Jesus. Winning waves, winning waves. You, you won't do this for very long. What will you do? Jesus, winning waves, Jesus, winning waves, Jesus, winning waves, winning waves, winning waves, winning waves. Hmm? He should have never considered wind and waves. He should have never allowed himself to look at it, to think about it, to talk about it. He should have believed only. Come on, can you see this, friends? Yes. Hallelujah. We're making progress, saints. We're... He said, ask in faith. Nothing. How much? No, no vacillation. No back and forth. None. You pick one and ignore the rest. It's simple. Isn't it? You go to a restaurant, they got one item on the menu, one, one, beans and cornbread. What will you have today? Well, guess I'll have the beans and cornbread. No pulling your hair, no thinking, no trying, no struggle. Why? Because there's only one thing on the menu. Makes it so easy, so nice. And when the Word of God has first place in our life, there's always only one thing on the menu. Once we've found out what He said about it, there's nothing else to consider. There's nothing else to look at. There's nothing else to think about. There's nothing else to talk about. Do you believe it, saints? This is how you walk, really walk by faith. 
This is how it's done. You don't consider anything else. Only that. He said, uh, he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. You won't receive vacillating back and forth. You won't receive. If you're still talking the problem, you're not committed to faith. When you get in faith, you quit talking the problem. You stop it. Watch out for words like, we, I need. We need to. We're going to have to. How are we going to? Where are we going to get it? How's it going to happen? Why are you saying that? If you need it, you don't have it. Still trying to get it. You don't have it. Watch about talking about what you don't know, what you don't have, what you can't do. Why are you saying that? It's because of what you see. Right? You're walking by sight. You're talking what you don't see that you have it. I need it. You can't talk the feelings. And walk in faith. You just can't. You'll, you'll be tempted to. Sure, all of us will. Sometimes the temptation is, is, is strong. But you can't go, man, this is just so hard. I just, I just feel it. I just, I just need to vent. <laughs> Don't think you'll receive anything like that. You're not going to receive like that. You can't do that half the day. And say, oh yeah, I've got, I got to make a confession. I've got to make a confession. <laughs> Buy stripes, I'm healed. And to get on the phone, talk with somebody about how bad it is. You're not in faith. You're kidding yourself. Because if you're in faith, you don't talk that way. Amen. <laughs> Keep reading. Du- let not that man think you receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is what? Unstable in all his ways. Now skip down to the 19th verse. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. Somebody say slow. Slow Slow to speak, slow to wrath. How many believe death and life is in the power of the tongue? Do you believe it? I'm convinced that even the most conscientious and disciplined among us concerning the words of our mouth hasn't gone nearly far enough. And most folks haven't even really got started. Because we've grown up in a world that does not see words correctly at all. People think you speak to express yourself, you speak to communicate. These are not the primary reasons for speech and words. We're spirit beings created in the likeness and image of God. And God has created everything by His words. We're made in His likeness and image. Did the Bible tell us that we are to to be like Him and, and, and follow the example of the Father? Imitate God as dear children. Do you understand? God never just Vents. Thank God. (laughs) He never just says something because he got upset or mad or hurt. Never. 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 God doesn't just speak to express his feelings or to communicate. He uses his words to accomplish, to create, to change, to shape, right? To restore, to heal, to supply, to provide. Everything he says happens. 
Say it out loud. Everything he says happened. What if everything you said <laughs> happened? Now the reason we laugh is because we're so far from where we should be. People just yak and they just talk. And if they feel bad, they talk bad. And it looks bad, they talk about it. And they talk about that and they talk about the other. And they act like that their words don't matter. But keep reading this. He said, receive the engrafted word that's able to save your souls. Verse 21, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Deceiving your own self. If you're deceived, do you know you're deceived? No, if you knew you were deceived, you wouldn't be deceived. What's, what's being deceived? It means you believe something, you think it's right, but it's not. You think it's happening, but it's not happening. You're deceived. If any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass or a mirror. He beholds himself and goes his way and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. So many times in meetings like this, services or times privately in the word or prayer, you get more in the spirit than you realize you are. Being, getting in the spirit doesn't mean you're in a trance and not aware of physical things. That, that's a special thing. That doesn't happen all the time. But you don't have to have that happen to get more in the Spirit. Let me give you an example. I don't know at the times. Thank God I'm better at it now than I used to be. But there would be times, sometimes in the middle of the night, sometimes when I'd first wake up, sometimes I'm driving down the road, and man, I'd see something. I would see something so clear. And, and, and it's the Word. It's the answer. It's the truth. And something had crossed my mind, you better write that down. Or you better make some kind of note. And I'd think, Man, there's no way I'm ever going to forget that. I mean, that's just like branded in my mind. And 30 minutes later, I'm thinking, what was that that I was so excited about? See, that's, uh, that's showing you, you were more in the spirit at that moment than you realized you were. And then you got more back in the flesh. And it got away from you. Can you see that phrase? Uh, how many know the solution to that? If the Spirit of God prompts you to write it down, write it down. He actually said to me one time, he said, you don't think enough of that to write it down? I said, excuse me, where's my pen? <laughs> I do. Yes, sir, I do. But the challenge is that when the, when the Lord shows us the answer, when he shows us our redemption, he shows us the truth, our deliverance, our healing, our provision, whatever it is, the challenge is keeping that in front of you. Hmm? It's too easy to get back in the stuff of life and let it get away from you. You got to keep it in front of your eyes, keep it in your ears, keep it in your mouth, right? You got to keep, keep looking in that mirror of the glory of God. Yes. And if you're doing that, that's what you'll be talking about. Right. Whatever you're looking at and hearing and thinking is what you're going to be talking about every time. So what if you're talking about the problem? That's because you're looking at it. You're thinking about it. You're considering it. Keep reading. He said, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed if he'll keep it in front of him and not let it slip and not forget it. And notice the very next verse. This all flows together. If any man among you seem to be religious. Now when we hear religious, most all the folks in our camp think, ooh, boo, boo, ooh, <laughs> religious. But if you read the rest of the next verse, you'll see he talks about pure religion and undefiled before God. He's talking about something that God accepts that is good and pure religion. So we need mind renewal, don't we, about this. What he's talking about is holy observations, godly practices. And he says, back up to verse 26, 
If any among you seem to be a practicer of godly things, but he what? He doesn't bridle his tongue. What happens? He's deceiving his own heart if he's not doing what? If he's not controlling his mouth. Now, bridle includes the idea of a bit. He, I mean, he talks about it in the third chapter in the same book, doesn't he? But our, the, I won't take the time, but numerous scriptures, you know, that talk about guarding your mouth, guarding it. Do you think we've gone overboard about the words of our mouth? We hadn't gone far enough. Hmm? And I know from just the people I come in contact with daily, uh, and, and I'm, I'm not saying I've arrived, I'm, I know I'll make mistakes, and the thing is, you don't tend to notice the things that you've allowed in your life. Other people will notice them sometimes better than you do. Which is why we ought to be open. You ought not just get offended if somebody says, do you really want to say that? You think, hmm. Correct my confession. But your confession needs to be corrected too. Well, that's a stinky attitude. Do you want to get it fixed or not? You know, do you, you ought to be happy to see if something's not right. Yes. Now, I'm not saying make yourself the confession police. <laughs> Run around going, ah, oh, it's bad. You ought to be saying that. Oh, don't say that. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> Turn that thing on yourself. <laughs> right? Put this on yourself. And examine what you're saying. Because if you're talking the problem, you're deceiving yourself about being in faith. Are y'all listening, saints? No matter what kind of godly practices you're doing, if you're not controlling your mouth, if you're not watching that mouth night and day, your godly, pious practices are vain. They are producing nothing. Did I make this up? Did I say this? He said it. You with me, saints? If any man among you seem to be religious, but bridles not his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion, his pious practices are vain. This is why so many have not experienced results. All of us have made mistakes in these areas. Well, I I'm, I'm, need to read this before I comment. Go to the third chapter. Can you take some more of this? Or? Yes. Hmm? Chapter 3, verse 2, in many things we offend all, Make mistakes or come short. If any man offend not in word, in what he or she says, the same is a perfect man. Can you develop completely without developing in what you say? No, you can't. They're tied directly together. I don't care how many scriptures you can quote. I don't care how much talking in tongues you do. If you don't watch your mouth and you just say whatever you feel and whatever you see and repeat everything you hear, you are not a fraction of as spiritual as you think you are. Right? And the, so many of your pious practices are vain. They are producing no results. He said, if any man offend not in word, if you don't miss it in what you say, you are fully developed. Hallelujah. And able to bridle or control your whole body. If our words have enough power and faith, you can speak to any organ and it'll do what you tell it to do. You can speak to any joint or blood cell. Come on, are y'all listening to me? It will do what you say. But so many times, folks, it, words are so weak because they talk more what they see and feel than they do the word. You know, Christians talk about my bad elbow, my bum knee. <laughs> huh? Well, let's start with, do you want it to be a bum knee? 
then you should never, ever let that come out of your mouth again as long as you live. It's your good knee. It's your strong knee. I've heard folks say, well, that just puts me in bondage, you know. I have to watch everything that I say. No, you got it all backwards. The Bible said, open your mouth wide and you'll have destruction. This is one of the most challenging things you will ever do (laughs) is get a hold of your mouth and cut out the junk and quit talking the fear and the feelings and talk faith only. I'm not telling you it'll just fall on you. This is one of the most challenging things you'll ever do. But is it worth it? I said, is it worth it? When you quit talking the problem, you know what you'll hear? Clunk, clunk, clunk. You'll start shutting the doors to the devil. Whether you didn't realize you were allowing him access by all your wrong talking and all your wrong stuff, you'll start closing the doors. You'll start opening doors to the Lord. Can you say amen? Isn't Jesus the high priest of what we say? Isn't he the apostle? of our confession. He works directly with what we say. How do we get born again? Believe in your heart and say it with your mouth. That's how the great miracle of the new birth occurred. It's how everything works. Keep reading. He said, Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us. We turn about their whole body Behold the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. The tongue is the steering wheel of our life. If you're going the wrong way, what should you do? Huh? Let's say you drove down here from Illinois. And you get out on the road, and you get on 65 here, and you go south. (laughs) And you're going south, and you get to Harrison, and you're still going south. And you're getting closer and closer to Little Rock, and you think, I live in Illinois. I I don't want to go to Little Rock. But you just hold that steering wheel straight south, and you just put the foot down and go, but I don't want to go to Little Rock. I don't want to go south. I got to go north, but I'm going south. I'm going south. I am so going south. I'm going further south by the minute. I don't want to go south, but I'm going south. (laughs) What do you need to do? What do you need to do? (laughs) You you need to turn around. How are you going to turn around? Get the steering wheel. Right? Right? You don't have to face the engine in a different direction or take off all the tires or put them you, you, All you got to do is get the wheel. Now, now, let me ask you a question. When you make that first bit of turn, are you instantly going north? No, you're not. You're going southwest. <laughs> you're still going south. Right? And if you turn it some more, wherever you had to get off the interstate and get back around, sometimes on the interstate, you got to go west before you can go east, right? I mean, you've got to, but you, but you got to turn that wheel. And if you turn it enough, eventually you'll be going west. You're still not going north. What do you got to do? Keep cranking that wheel, right? Keep cranking that wheel to the north. And eventually, you'll get that thing turned around. He said what the helm is to the ship, what the bit and bridle is to the horse, I'd say what the steering wheel is to the car, your mouth is to your life. If you're going down, 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 what you must not say is, I'm going down. (laughs) I don't want to go down, but I'm going down. Oh, dear me, we're further down than we were yesterday. We're going down, and it looks like we're going more down tomorrow. We're going down, we're going down. I know it's funny, but why could not the almighty creator of the heavens and the earth get his first covenant people out of Egyptian bondage into the promised land, even though he had prepared it before the foundation of the world? Why couldn't he do it? 
He couldn't get them to shut up saying, we're going to die out here. They wouldn't quit. And so, eventually, they got what they said. It happened. They died out there. And it was not the will of God. It was not the plan of God. But he goes on to say, the tongue is a fire. Verse 5, the tongue's a little member, it boasts great things. How great a matter a little fire kindleth. The, uh, see, just like you drop a match and it can eventually turn into something that's devouring thousands of acres. You don't see it when you drop that match. It's a little bitty. Might it, flame might even be there. It just might be an ember that kicks back up when the wind comes. Words are like that. There are many times people say things and it looks like there's nothing to it. But it started something. It set some things in motion and in sequence. And it may not show up all today or tomorrow, but it sets some things in motion and eventually can be a roaring fire of problems in that person's life. And it started when the enemy got them started talking that way years ago. Keep reading. He said, the tongue is a fire, the tongue among our members, it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. It is set on fire of hell. You ought never say anything but what you desire and want about your body. Never say you have a slow metabolism. Never. Why do you want to say that? Never say this or that is weak. I've got a sensitive stomach. You know what I got? I got a cast iron missionary stomach. <laughs> Ask my wife. She laughs about it. <laughs> you won't hear me say anything else. I know that the Lord had to help me on this years ago. Back, you know, when they still smoked on the airlines and I was traveling commercial totally back then and, and even going out of the country sometimes. And, and uh, uh, I, I had been bothered by cigarette smoke in the past. And there had been times where I had to ride in the back with all that smoking for hours. And by the time I got where I, going, I was going, I couldn't speak. I'd lost my voice. And I started saying, faith preacher started saying, I can't take cigarette smoke. It bothers me. I can't, I can't be around it. I can't handle it. Somebody said, what's wrong with that? <laughs> Everything. Everything's wrong with that. And so what do you suppose happened over the next few months and years? Time after time. I'd just be around somebody that walked by with a cigarette. They start going, hot, hot, hot. And then it makes you want to, you know, Make a bigger deal out of it than what it is. It don't have to be that big of a deal. Why does it have to bother you more than somebody else? Well, because my system's so special and so, so <laughs> delicate. And I have such a highly refined sense of smell. And no, there's a deficiency. Oh, that's why you could handle it as good as anybody else could handle it. There's a weakness. And it's connected to right here. Again and again, things have developed because people started saying them in childhood or in their teenage years or young adult, just like that match that was dropped. And you didn't see it in the beginning, but eventually it just got bigger and bigger and worse and worse. That's what happened with that cigarette thing. Until, man, it, I saw I was in a situation where I had to ride an airline, and man, I, they couldn't hardly push me on. Because it just, it just choked me up and just caused me problems for days and days. And I thought, I can't, I can't do that. I, I can't take that. And, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, how long are you going to keep saying that? And I, I saw it. I thought, God, forgive me. I have just caused myself problems with this. And I said it out. I said, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me any more than anybody else. Now see, if you're used to saying the other thing, it's something that you've identified as you and your special system. And if you want to have problems with it the rest of your life, well, just hold on to it and keep saying it. 
But if you're still talking the problem, you are not in faith. Come on, can you see it, friends? Hmm? What are you allergic to? <laughs> How about your allergies? Huh? Got a lot of allergies, I guess. Things you can't handle. Things you can't take. Things you can't be around. Huh? Right? Right? Things you better not eat. Because they cause you problems. Man, if you eat that, whoo. Blow up like a balloon. and It's just bad. I can't eat that. You ever heard that? I can't, I can't eat that. Now I know what I'm talking about. I've had people come in in healing school back at Brother Hagin's ministry that had masks on and gloves on that were allergic to the air, supposedly. I've ministered to people that were allergic to people. Quite a problem. <laughs> allergic to every kind of food. I've seen all of these folk get completely set free. Hallelujah. And be able to be around and do and have and eat anything that any, any other normal person could have and do. If you will change. Somebody say, well, I just, I just need to go out and eat a bunch of it. No, you need to fix your mouth. You need to fix your mouth. And if you do it long enough, then you will be able to. But the, it doesn't begin with what's on your plate. It begins with what's under your nose. Can you say amen? amen? Do words matter, saints? Yes. They do. Can you take some more? Yes. He said, every kind of beast and birds and serpents and things of the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind, but the tongue can no man tame. It's an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. You can tame a tiger, but you can't tame a tongue. I said, well, that's it. We can't tame it anyway. What's the purpose of this sermon? <laughs> I might as well just let her rip because the Bible said you can't tame it anyway. Well, then why would he even be talking to us about it? If there's nothing you can do. No, no, no. Men and women have tamed animals outside themselves, creatures other than themselves, but you cannot tame another's tongue. I can't tame your tongue. You can't tame my tongue. Nobody can make you talk right. That includes your spouse. You say, make me talk right. They can't. They can't. No, nobody can tame your tongue but you. Or, in other words, only you can prevent forest fires. Right. <laughs> Isn't that what he talked about? In the famous words of Smokey. <laughs> Keep reading. He said, uh, therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Should we talk both? No. no. We should talk only one. We, we can't, if you're in faith about it, you can't talk about how bad it is. If you're, in, if you're really in faith about it, you can't tell everybody all the details so they can pray. That's right. Speaking the truth. You can't. Because you're continuously looking at it, thinking about it, talking about it, and what did the Bible say? You're deceiving your heart. Your pious practices are, are producing nothing if you're not controlling your mouth. Keep reading. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Does a fountain send forth the same place sweet water and bitter? The fig tree uh, bear olives or a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and 
fresh. If fear is coming out and worry and anxiety and, and the, the, the pain and the problems and the lack in the bills, that is not a faith fountain. That's a fear fountain. That's an unbelief fountain. Go to Matthew, please, the 12th chapter. Aren't we excited and happy about this today? Because we're going to get a hold of our mouths. Hmm? I said we're going to get a hold of our mouths. Thank you, Lord. And we're going to get results like we hadn't been getting. You believe it? We're going to quit being double-tongued, and double-visioned, and double-minded. We're going to eliminate it down to one. There's nothing else on the menu but healing. That's all we talk, right? Live. We don't talk dying. We talk living. We don't talk broke. We talk blessed. Hmm? That's it. We don't talk hard times. We talk good times. We don't talk going down. We talk coming up. Is that right? And that's all we talk. Only. Say it out loud. Fear not. Believe only. You shall be made whole. You're in Matthew 12. Well, listen to this. Just just hold your place there. Put up 2 Corinthians 11.3. You don't, don't turn there. They'll put it up on the screen. 2 Corinthians 11, 3. You're at Matthew 12. The Spirit of God through Paul said, I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be what? Corrupted from what? Simplicity, Simplicity is from the word that means single. Simplicity. Doubt is from that. One of the words doubt is from that word that means double. Duo. So that your minds would be corrupted from the singleness, the simplicity. How many know when there's only one, it's simple? Right? In the beginning, there was only one thing. God said, don't eat of the fruit. You'll die. Simple. Right? Simple. What else is there to believe about it? Nothing else. That's it. That's the truth. Then the devil comes along and says, well, that's not all there is to it. You see the pride of intellect here. We live in a very educated, developed society where people have become complex beings. Very, very complex in their thinking which is to say very confused and full of doubt. It is. It's not complicated when there's only one thing to consider. He said, no, there's other things to consider, the devil says, because you'll get all this wisdom and you won't really die, die. It's not like that. So it becomes complicated because you've got other things to consider. On the one hand, God said, don't eat of the fruit, you'll die. On the other hand, you've got this wisdom thing and not really dying. And what's the problem? How do people get so confused? Considering things they should never consider. Looking at things, thinking about things, talking about things they should never consider. I've had people tell me, well, the Lord dealt with me to go here and do this, or be a part of this work, or be a part of this. But, you know, I just don't know about the kids and, and about this and about the other and about my folks and, and about my retirement. There's so many things to consider. No, there's not. There's one thing to consider. If he told you to go, you ought to be packing. Knowing the rest of it, well, if he told you to stay, you ought to be rejoicing. Hmm? There's nothing else to consider. Unless you want to be confused and duo and waver and not receive anything. Somebody say, not me. Not me. 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 
Matthew 12. Thank you, Lord. I'm thinking about closing. But I should only think about one thing at a time, right? So I'm just going to stay with this. <laughs> well, now let's talk about you. What should you be thinking about right now? <laughs> huh? How quick you can get out of the parking lot? Where are you going to eat? What are you going to do this afternoon or tonight? Multitasking is a myth. <laughs> now I know some folks don't believe it yet, but you better pray about this and look at it. Because it can be a way the enemy can get in. And easily distract you and deter you. There's all, there are many voices in the world, aren't there? Boy, and in our media age, it seems like they're multiplying by the millions. There, I mean, you can type one thing in a search engine and just like that, there's three million possibilities. And if you're dumb, you'll try to look at all of it. And people are leaning sometimes more and more on technology than being led. Well, this helps me to eliminate and to consider and to better myself. Yeah, but if you get led, you know there's only one thing to look at to start with. <laughs> so you don't even need to deal with all that. You save yourself all kind of time. Instead of spending days and days with 50 appointments, kicking the tires and asking questions and being all kind of places you got no business being, right. talking to people you shouldn't even be talking to. Come on, are y'all listening to? Yeah. Going through this laborious, wearying process of elimination. Right. A lot of times what happens is when people are at the wrong place with the wrong folks, they allow the enemy to give them an idea of something they shouldn't even be considering. And wind up following it. And that's the thing that doesn't get provided for. That's so hard that you wind up with a lawsuit over. And then they get mad and blame those folks. And the truth is they should have never picked up the phone and called them. They should have never even gone over there. Are y'all listening to me saints? It was not the one thing to be considering at the time. Matthew 12, are you there? Yes. 33, either make the tree good and his fruit good or make the tree corrupt and the fruit corrupt for the tree is known by his fruit. What kind of fountain are you? Yes. Bitter or sweet? sweet? Curse or blessing? blessing. Faith or fear? Faith. What comes out of you? Part-time? No. Huh? Part-time? No. Full-time. I only say one thing about the finances of this church and the churches and the ministries. You will not, you cannot sneak up on me and hear me talking about how hard it is or where are we going to get it. You could not hit me with a bat and make me say it. That's how much I believe in the power of my words. You know what I say? The money is not going to be a problem. That's what he told me. Right? And it doesn't matter what you hear or see or how big the price tag gets, the money's not going to be a problem. He always supplies all our needs, right? With long life, he will satisfy me and show me his salvation. I will run my entire race. I will finish my course with joy. Doesn't make any difference. What else happens? And that's all I will say about that. Y'all with me, saints? Yeah. We're making it. Yeah. We're going through. Yeah. We're victorious. We're, we're, we're more than conquerors. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's all we see. Now, I think y'all know what I'm talking about, what the Lord's talking about here. But, you know, I, I'm with uh, faith preachers sometimes that in private, they're not talking faith. And you want to go, psh, psh. <laughs> quit that. Don't say that. 
But most folk could just get mad if you say, don't say that. But I, I cringe sometimes because I believe what the Bible says about the power of your words. That what's coming out of your mouth is affecting your life. It is steering your life into something, good or bad. I believe it. And, and I, I've been fairly conscientious about it, but I don't believe I've gone nearly far enough. How many think you ought to watch every word that comes out of your mouth? He said, a good man, verse 35, out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. What kind of things you want to bring forth? Good things. Good things out of the, verse 34 had said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. People talk about the problem because that's what their heart is more full of, is the problem. If our heart gets full enough of faith, that's what we'll talk. And that's only what we'll talk. Go to the sixth chapter of Matthew. I think I'll close with this. What are you going to say about your kids? Hmm? He just did the dumbest thing you ever saw. What are you going to say? It's a smart boy. That boy of mine. Hmm? Does faith call those things that be not? As though they were not just acting religious Releasing faith, releasing your words to cause things to come around him to incline him toward brightness. Hmm? I don't know why they just do such stupid stuff. He knows better than that. Sinners talk like that. People that never heard a faith message in their life talk like that. And, and, and how does it produce? How does it work for them? They get more of the same. If he keeps doing that, he's going to ruin his life. He's going to ruin his life. I'm afraid he's going to ruin. What if everything that came out of your mouth happened? That's the way it is with our father. He's training us. It's kind of good that he's had the power cut way back on us. <laughs> but I'd like to pass some tests. How about you? And get my mouth under control so he could turn the power up. Come on, are you listening? Turn the power up so your words carry more weight and carry more impact. Whew. I've touched more of it in recent times. I, there's been times the Lord had, you know, Brother Copeland's been talking about just say what you hear him say and, and, and focusing more on that kind of thing. And there's been times, re, I, I'm not in church, I'm out with somebody, I'm, uh, something's going on, and the Lord had come up in my heart. I look at him and say, you will overcome this. Hallelujah. And it'll be good. You'll have total victory in this area. And I, I, I've seen people look at me and, and they say, you mean that? You, well, why would they say that? Because the words are impacting them. They're hitting them. And they're doing something inside them. You don't have to be a preacher for that to happen for you, saints. This is supposed to be for every child of God. But you talk a bunch of light junk and you talk a bunch of feelings and fear all the time. Your words will be powerless and they'll be empty. No, say it out loud. Oh, Lord. Set a watch. At the door of my mouth. The door of my mouth. Alert, me Alert me. Before. before. Or, if I'm saying or if I'm saying. Wrong words. Wrong words. If I'm speaking doubt. I'm speaking if I'm, doubt. Speaking I'm speaking fear. Check me. Check me. Alert me. Alert me. And by your, grace, by your grace. I'll arrest myself. I'll, arrest myself. I'll, stop, it. I'll stop it. And I'll speak faith filled words. Life-filled words, power-filled words. Oh, glory to God. Glory. Stand on your feet, everybody. Let's lift up our hands. Oh, lift up your hands. Lift up your praise. Say, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands. Lift up your heart. Lift up your voice. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for helping us with our words. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for correcting us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Everybody play just a little bit. Just whatever. Go so came right at you again, David and Amalus. Neve lembran sonte fala com bromomoso na voja wenede. O selan kistin genovamba. O soman glas emanos la vi. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Just close your eyes. I believe I'm directed of the Spirit to lead us in some things here. Put your hands on your head. Don't just parrot me, but release faith in your words. Said out loud, I am not dumb. I am bright. I am sharp. My mind is sharp. He makes me of quick understanding in the reverence of the Lord. I can learn anything. I can understand anything I need to. It's not hard for me. It's easy for me with His help. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Say it out loud. I am not forgetful. I have a good memory. I have a great memory. I remember every detail of everything I need to. Oh, hallelujah. Never again say anything about being old or forgetful. Never. Treat it like the worst cuss words. Never let that come out of your mouth again, saints. Say it out loud again. I am not forgetful. I have a sharp mind and a great memory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say this out loud. I will never lose my mind. I will never. I will never lose my mind. I will be sharp and bright till I draw my last breath. And even sharper then. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't say anything else. No matter what you ever hear or see or feel, never say anything else. Glory to God. Put your hands on the middle part of your body. Hallelujah. The Bible said we are to rule and reign in this life by our Lord Jesus Christ. How do kings rule and reign? If they want a ditch dug, they don't look for a shovel. They issue the command. Right? And the ditch gets dug. That's how we rule and reign. Said out loud, immune system. Be strong. Be strong. Very, strong. Very strong. Hallelujah. Glands. Glands. Be, normal. Be normal. Be perfect. Be perfect. Function, perfectly. Function perfectly. Levels. Levels. Be, correct. Be correct. Be restored. Be, restored. Be, normal. Be normal. In Jesus' name. 
I'll receive that for a moment. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody say it's working. It's working. It's working. Never again tell people you have imbalances and you have weak glands or non-functioning or improperly functioning parts. Don't say, no matter what they've been doing, tell them to work right. And if you believe it, they have to come in line. The word said, if you control your words, you, you control your whole body. Didn't it say it? Put one hand on your back, one on your front. Sit out loud, kidneys. Kidneys. Be clean. Be clean. Every infection. Every, infection. Every, bit of inflammation. Every bit of inflammation. Go. Go. Get, out. Get out. You can't stay. You can't stay. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Liver. Liver. Be cleansed. Be cleansed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be cleansed. Be cleansed. I can see in the spirit, I can see the sparkling life of God all over that organ. I can see it. Ha ha ha. Ha Receive it. On the internet, receive it, receive it. You should have your, on the internet, you should have your hands on your body too. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Say out loud, gallbladder. Be clean, clean. cleansed, restored, Restored. work perfectly, work Work normally. normally. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kidneys, 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 Kidneys. be clean, clean. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you. Say it out loud. Every abscess, every sore, dry up, be healed in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. That includes ulcers in the stomach and in the intestines and the colon sores. And ulcers are being healed right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Say it out loud. Every tumor. Every every cyst. Every every growth. Everything that ought not be there that my heavenly Father did not plant, I curse you, die, dry up, be dissolved, be removed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Begin to thank the Lord. Begin to praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Put one hand on your neck, one on your back again. Said out loud, discs, discs. Be, restored. be restored. Any ruptures, any, ruptures. any, swellings. any swellings, any inflammation, any inflammation. Go, down. go down. Be normal. Be normal. In, the In the name of Jesus. Discs, discs. Vertebra. vertebra, nerves, nerves. Be, aligned. be aligned. Go into place, be healed, be made strong in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 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 Oh. 
back parts are moving into place right now. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Praise you, Lord. Put your hands on the lower part of your, your belly, lower part of your abdomen. Say it out loud. I, uh, let's just stop again. What did Jesus say? Fear not. Are we going to do it? How much fear? No. What do we do? Believe only. Put your hands there. Say it out loud. I do not. Have colon, have colon problems. I do not, I do not have, irritable have irritable bowel. I do not, I do not have, digestive have digestive problems. Stomach, Stomach. Intestines. intestines, colon, colon. Be, clean. be clean, be healed, be, healed. be right. Be restored. Be restored. Work. 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 Normally. Normally. Perfectly. Perfectly. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Sit out loud. I don't, I don't. have food allergies. I don't, I don't have restrictions and limitations any different any more than any normal person hallelujah oh lift up your hands lift up your voice thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord I can do anything I need to do I can be around anything I need to be around. I can eat anything I need to eat. I can sleep anywhere I need to sleep. Oh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh. Let's sing victory is mine.